Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are doing my top 23 books of 2023. I think as of right now, I've read 62 books and I have about half of December left. But my goal this year, I think was to read 50 or 51. No, it was to read 53 books, which was very random. But I read exactly 52 books in 2022 and I just wanted to read at least one more. So I'm very proud of the number of books I've read this year, but that's not what we're here to talk about. So I'm going to go from least favorite to most favorite book of the year. I also only included one book from each series because I didn't want to include like four books from each series and then I would only really be talking about like 15 books in my head. So I did just include one book per series and did like my favorite book of the series. So again, starting from least favorite, basically in 23rd place is the Homeworkers by Mary Kay Andrews. I actually thrifted an advanced reader's edition. I don't think it's much different other than like it's a really big floppy paperback. I loved this book. I rated it a three and a half and the first five books I'm going to talk about are all rated three and a half just so I don't have to keep saying that but this book is like HGTV in a book which I think is why I loved it so much. It's basically about a young widow and her former father-in-law that fixes houses together and they get discovered to do a TV show and they don't really want to do it but they really need the money so they go ahead and do it and it just kind of follows like their path of the TV show. That's why I said it's just like HGTV but in a book. Next up, I have The Summer of 69 by Ellen Hildebrand. This is a very character focused book. It takes place during the Vietnam War. It also takes place on Nantucket, which I think every single one of Ellen Hildebrand's books takes place on Nantucket. So you follow this family and see how they change and grow as the Vietnam War affects them. I really liked it and I just kind of like fell in love with all of these characters. Next up, I have Lady Takes the Case. This is a duology and it was my first ever cat mystery. This is a historical fiction. It takes place in the 1920s. It reminds me a lot of Downton Abbey, which I think is part of why I really liked it. It also introduced me to the world of cat mysteries mysteries. Are you crooked? Anyways, like I was saying, this introduced me to the world of cat mysteries and I just love cat mysteries. They're super cozy, especially on a day like today where it's raining, like it's super gloomy outside. I would love to curl up with a little cat mystery. I also have a cat, so I'm very in love with cats, which I think is part of why I really did like this book. Next up is The X Hex. This is my favorite October witchy time read. It is about a girl who puts a hex on one of her exes and her and her cousin have to try to reverse this hex. So it follows them and the guy that they did the hex on. And then I know the second one came out to this one. I think it's a companion novel, so you don't actually have to read the first one, but it follows the cousin, and I'm really excited to read that one. Earlier this year, I read Matthew Perry's memoir, Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing, and I do want to say I'm really glad that I read this earlier this year before his passing, because I don't think I could have ever gotten around to it after his passing. I still find it hard to watch Friends, to be honest, but I really enjoyed this book. It was really hard to read and discover exactly what he went through, because it is such a sad story, but I'm really glad I read it, and I I learned a lot more about like him and his time on Friends and even like before that and growing up and everything he went through. I also just discovered my love for memoirs this year and this was just one of the memoirs I read this year that I really really enjoyed. And now we're getting into my four star reads which I have quite a bit of four star reads from this year. First up Atomic Habits. I feel like this book is really iconic in like the self-help book industry world. I did listen to this on audiobook so I actually do want to go back and reread it and get a physical copy so that I can write in it but I still feel like even though I listened to it as an audiobook format I took a lot away from this book and I think I would take even more away from it if I had the physical copy and I could go in and annotate it and, and then obviously like go back and look at the parts I annotated because those are the parts that like I felt like I needed the most or stuck out to me the most. But even though I did listen to it as an audiobook, I still think about the parts that stuck with me, which is why I want the physical copy. Next up, I read Suicide Notes from Beautiful Girls. I'm gonna word this a little bit weird because I don't know what would flag YouTube like synopsis wise, but it's about a girl who was found dead and her best friend and it follows like this path of the post dead and her best friend like can't really come to terms with the fact that the other girl is dead. I don't know how what else to say or how else to put that without giving anything away but I also remember the first half of this book like I loved it and I probably could have done without the second half but the first half really stuck with me. I was also really into nonfiction this year. One of my goals was actually to read five nonfiction books this year and I'm including memoirs in that and I definitely surpassed that because I actually have a good amount of nonfiction books to talk about with you guys but the first one is The First Conspiracy, The Plot to Kill George Washington. Nope, The Secret Plot to Kill George Washington. I really enjoyed this one. His writing is honestly very dramatic and sometimes that was getting a little bit annoying but the drama part of his writing really made it feel like I wasn't reading a textbook and that's something that scares me a little bit and puts me off to nonfiction is when it feels like I'm reading a textbook. I don't like that. He made this to where I did not feel like I was reading a textbook at all. It was super entertaining and I feel like the title really gives away what this is about. It's about George Washington and he brings in a lot of facts to like back up this conspiracy that someone was trying to kill him so it was really interesting to read. Next up I have Origin 
by Dan Brown. This is a part of the Da Vinci Code series, which follows Robert Langdon. This is actually the last book in the series, and I read this pretty early on in the year. So I don't remember a ton of what it's about, but I also don't want to spoil this one. So this whole series basically follows Robert Langdon, who is an art history professor. So he's very smart, and these books do a really good job of incorporating history into it while still being very action-packed. So I really liked that. I'm also, as you can probably tell, a little bit into history. So I liked that these books included history in an action-packed fictional way, and I wouldn't call them historical fiction either because they're more like sci-fi action kind of books, but they also still incorporate that history element to them because that's what Robert Langdon does for a living. Next up is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. This is actually the prequel to The Hunger Games, which the movie actually just came out. I haven't seen it, but I think people are very iffy on it. I will say the book wraps everything up and like ties it in a bow very nicely and neatly, and some people don't like that. I did like that. It closed every single tie that was opened in the first three books. It's the prequel, so it takes place years 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 before and it follows President Snow and I thought his story was so interesting like just his villain origin uh, it was yeah I don't know I liked it I'm also a really big fan of the Hunger Games though so that might be guiding my opinion here next I have A Court of Thorns and Roses this is a part of a series there's five books including a novella I read the entire series this year and of course I made a little reading vlog out of it but this was actually my favorite book in the series and I will say I think that's just because this is kind of a loosely Beauty and the Beast retelling and Beauty and the Beast is my favorite fairy tale I love Beauty and the Beast so I really enjoyed reading this one I would say this whole series in general is a four star series for me but this one just I don't know what about it I think it was just because it was Beauty and the Beast retelling. I loved this one. Next up is a very recent read. This is The Santa Suit by Mary Kay Andrews. It feels kind of very random to have a Christmas story this high up on my list, but you guys, this was the best Christmas story I've ever read. I don't know if all of Mary Kay Andrews books are very HGTV, but this one was also a little bit HGTV. It had some of the house elements in it, not as much as the homeworkers did, but still just a little bit of the home elements in there, which I really liked. And I also loved the romance in the story and learning about like, the story behind the Santa suit and like the title of the book I really liked. Next up, I have another romance. This is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This is Enemies to Lovers, but also for Forced. This is Enemies to Lovers, but also for forced proximity. I don't know why it's so hard for me to say that, but it is. But basically this is about two people that are forced to go on vacation together and you find out why in the book. I don't want to spoil anything. It's probably on the back of the book, but I really like going into these books blind. So you learn why they have to go on vacation together in the book. But while they're on the vacation, they get to know each other and they get to know secrets of the other family. So a lot of things kind of unravel while they're on vacation together. And I was eating this book up. Yet another memoir, and I'm not even done talking about memoirs, okay? So strap in. This is Beyond the Wand by Tom Felton, who plays Drake in the Harry Potter series. And guys, I think Draco might be my first celebrity crush ever. I was obsessed with Harry Potter growing up and I loved Draco, okay? Let's just get that out there. I loved Draco. So reading this book, I felt like I was just really appeasing my inner child. I'm also still in love with Harry Potter. My costume this year was Harry Potter themed, but I really loved reading about his point of view of playing Draco and what it was like being in that world as such a young kid. So I definitely recommend this one. I loved it, especially for all of my Harry Potter fans out there. And the forward is by Emma Watson and I just love their friendship. Friendship, so worth the read for sure. Next up is An Ambush of Widows by Jeff Abbott. The best way I can explain this book without giving anything away is that a husband dies and with his death they uncover a lot of secrets from his life. This reminded me a lot of the Winter in Paradise series by Ellen Hildebrand. Just a little bit more action and a lot less of the romance aspect. But if you enjoyed the Winter in Paradise series I think you would enjoy that book as well. Next up is They Both Die at the End. I don't think that this is a dystopian book but it reminds me of a dystopia because in this world they find out the day that they're going to die that they're going to die. I think it sends out like at midnight like hey you're gonna die today so our main character gets that notice that he's gonna die that day and there's like an app for people to connect that are going to die that day so he goes on the app so that he can spend his last day with someone and so you follow these two characters through their last day but you don't know how they're gonna die the main characters don't know how they're gonna die so you're reading this whole book without knowing how and when they're going to die and of course you do find out it is gut-wrenching but really worth the read how many times have i said worth the read in this video probably a lot next i have the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood this is the first ali hazelwood book I've ever read. She's known for her science love romances. Science love romances. Her <laughs> science romances. This is another book that I listened to but I really really enjoyed it. Some audiobooks are great, some are not. It's fake dating and just everything about it was so good. She really makes you fall in love with the characters but also just the couple and their romance and their story. And I will say I didn't rate it a five because I thought it was pretty predictable. A lot of romances to me are very predictable which is why they don't end up getting five stars but this one there was a, a pretty big part where I was like okay I know what's happened here and I feel like I'm 
not great at guessing things. So when I do guess things, I'm like, okay, well then that means if I guessed it, a lot of other people guessed it. Next up, I have Blush by Jamie Brenner. This one is about a young woman who goes home and she grew up on a winery and her family like runs this winery and they live on it as well. So when she goes home, she realizes that the winery is in trouble. And so she stays at home to try to help her family to like recover the winery and just help them turn things around. But she's also dealing with family issues at the same time, like with her husband and her kids. So you follow the winery story and her family story, which I loved. I only rated four books this year at five star. I'm pretty picky with my five stars. To me, a five star means I absolutely love the book. There's nothing that I would change. And it's a book that I think about often. It's just a book that sticks with me for a long time. First up, I have I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I grew up absolutely in love with iCarly. I watched it all the time. I had their little props. Like I had an iCarly microphone. I had the little buttons that Sam pressed in the show, like on her little um, remote, like the blue remote. I loved iCarly so much. So I knew when this was coming out that I just had to read it. And it was a hard read. Her story is hard. And I just can't believe she was like on iCarly putting on that face every single day. But it was a great read because it felt like I was talking to her. I really felt like her personality was in this book. And you don't always get that with memoirs. Next up, I have Five Survive by Holly Jackson. I think this might be my favorite thriller of the year. You don't really connect with a lot of the characters in this book, but honestly, in a thriller, I don't care. Like I'm here for the plot. I'm not here for the characters. And this book delivered on the plot. I was hooked on this book. I think I read it in a couple days while like still doing school and being super busy. This was such a good read. And it makes me so excited to read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson because I still haven't gotten to those books yet. But hopefully in 2024, I will read those books. And I definitely want to read them before I watch the TV show that's coming out. Number two favorite book of this year is Happy Place by Emily Henry. I feel like so many people loved this book this year. It came out this year. So everyone's talking about it. We all love it. And I just relate to this main character, honestly, more than I would like to admit. Like, I feel like Emily Henry wrote this book about me. But it's not just about the romance in this book. The romance is great. I loved the two of them together. The man just shows he just he oh, I don't know how to put this without spoiling anything he is just a great main male character and she did such a great job of representing mental health in men in this book and I loved it I fell for every single character every single love story and all of the friendships in this book if you take away two books from this video to read it would be this one and the book that I'm about to talk about next this is The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston this is a very recent read for me but I cannot stop thinking about this book I wake up and I think about this book this book now sets the standard for every single other romance book I read. The couple in this book I connected to the most out of any book couple ever in my life. I loved it so much. It's basically about an apartment that can time travel seven years into the past, but you never know when the apartment is going to time travel. That's the kicker. It is just a beautiful read. You follow the woman in this book and like her work and dealing with the death of her aunt. I love this. I devoured it. I think about it all the time. Literally my favorite. Well, that is my top 23 books of 2023. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And comment below what books and videos you want to see from me in 2024. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!